I'm Aro Bau. I'm studying at the Master of Music in Tilburg at AMPA. And I'm creating an opera in my two years of study. I normally work very visually because uh, music is only secondary. I start with image, uh, thought, Im imagination. When I have something visual in my head, I want to think about what that sounds like. And that's always the starting point of my music. The story is about a city that is secluded from the rest of the world by um, big walls. And everyone living inside has never seen what is beyond the wall. There is only one leader and he knows what is behind because he goes there every year to get supplies for the city. And he tells them, oh no, don't go beyond the wall because that's, that's awful. There is nothing there, there's only evil, don't go there. Um, and one day this uh, young naive girl um, lives through an, uh, something and therefore is is uh, unconsciously or in a dream state accompanying the, the leader on his journey beyond the wall. Is it a dream or is it not a dream? That's the question throughout the story. Um, but what she sees is very confronting because um, she finally knows now what is beyond the wall and why the leader says sh they shouldn't go. And it's more of a story of oppression, of uh, deceit, also the, the difference between right and wrong and there being no difference at all. There is no one, there is not one bad person or one good person. There is, there is conflict in every person. And how you should deal with that, how, how the audience can deal with that, because it's, it's, the story is no set story. It has multiple storylines where the audience can choose from. I think, this story came to me just from everything. It seems like everything that was in the news, everything that happened around us was, uh, was a part of this story. Uh, for example, Donald Trump physically wanting to build a wall and the pandemic um, creating such walls between uh, the, the rich and the poor, the people that could afford healthcare, the people that would just die. And yeah, the, the need to also say uh, it's your fault so everyone there is bad everyone there is good it just everything that happens around me amplifies the moral of the story then the plan became to um, to make it interactive to to have this story um, where the people at home could choose the outcome make decisions for the main character and see how the story would unfold according to that during the creation of the story, I, I met some other people I wanted to work with. For example, um, I was working on a dance project with some dancers and one of them did uh, creative writing and knew someone that would be good for the story and uh, could be a great writer for this, for this story. So um, then I met Merit Vessis and uh, she's an awesome writer. She was so enthusiastic. She developed the story from my concept and she wrote the storylines and the lyrics that are sung by the musicians. I think about, we've been working on this now for a year and a half, maybe even two years already. Um, and in the beginning we were still very much focused on just creating an opera, which probably would have been already quite experimental as well, but um, the beginning of it was mostly, in my memory, a lot of talking to each other, me and Aura, just also Birka sometimes the director. Um, we just get together and just talk through the different story points and the different plot points and what we wanted the characters to do and what we wanted it to do with an audience and like it's just mostly a lot of talking and thinking about things uh, even before I actually started writing. Turning the concept into a story I think was very much a collaborative effort. Um, Aura already had such a clear vision and like feeling of what she wanted everything to be. Uh, that for me it was mostly about trying to figure out what that was and how I would be able to internalize that to use all that information like her vision and ideas to use that to create just the words just yeah that different form the, the word format for the concept um, so again that was just mostly a lot a lot of talking and then just trying it just sitting down and thinking okay let me just write something down and see what happens and whether or not those voices of the characters uh, fit with what she wanted it to be. 
The music came in quite soon after I made the mood board. I started to think in, uh, in music. Uh, if I have these images, these parts of the world, how would that sound like? How would it be to go from an empty desert uh, and walk into a forest with birds? And how would that change the sound, change your feeling, the atmosphere? Um, and when I found musicians that would suit the music I, I was composing, I also found Katrina Sampaku. And she is this amazing conductor. She just knows how to work with people. She is a very sensitive but strong-willed person. So she could really, you know, she didn't compromise, but was still very um, kind and, and um, and nice to work with. One of the reasons I got very excited about this project is because Aura decided to not create a classical opera as we know from Mozart, from uh, Rossini, from all the classical composers. She decided to upgrade it and to give it a modern uh, sense. She used a lot of electronic sound. Also for me, I didn't hear again that uh, we could use the, the, the name animated opera. For me, it's something very new because I have seen productions with opera like a real movie with actor, actors, but I haven't seen before an animated opera. So I think that only this name make the, this project unique. She also add inside electric guitar, she added drums, and I really like that during the music she wrote, she adds some different characters, a lot of uh, differences in dynamics. So I think that this is something that we don't uh, see a lot in classical operas, and I think that this is something that made it unique. When I started to work on this project, there were actually a few uh, small orchestras that were interested. Um, but because of uh, the pandemic, I just told them, well, this isn't going to happen because we can't all come together. And with my new concept, I went to my school and they were very excited. They uh, decided to help me put the musicians together and we started working in small groups, so I would rehearse together with Katrina, um, with only four string players, for example, and four woodwinds. And we do that so many times that we gather these groups uh, that are an orchestra, but just separate. And we went into the studio with them just to record um, their part and layer them on top of each other. And it was a really interesting process. I never did something like that in the past. and. I really wanted to create something new also for me as a conductor because I think that every person, every musician want, a mu musician want to create new things and to come in touch with uh, new projects and new musical concepts. So I, I, I really found this idea very, uh, very smart and the most excited part for me, I can say as a conductor, was when I started to do the recordings because, as I said, I never did a recording before and it was really nice to hear after on my headphones the result of the musicians and every after recording when we had the strings, after we had the winds, after we had the brass, of course I already created an audio before the rehearsals, but when I start to hear our result, what we create with the musicians, all the, the effort we put on that and as I said to Aura, it's like our baby, we create that baby together and to give it life to this project, for me it was really exciting. There are a few uh, instruments and people that tie the music together, so um, there are three main characters, the, um, the, the leader of, of the city, uh, the naive young girl that discovers the outside world and the people. And I chose the people to be one character together one as a herd of sheep and they are sung by the choir so you have the choir and the two main singers um, and they just have these conversations all the time um, next to that there is this flute um, a duduk and it ties it's a very warm melodic sound and it, it ties in the they it ties the scenes together together with the orchestra. So the search for an animator was a long one. Um, uh, I look, 
looked at the, at the school here, at the HKU, uh, everywhere to just find someone that was uh, and willing and was really um, uh, all about the story and, and uh, what had a soothing style to the, to the music. But in the end, through Anthony Viermara, a friend of uh, Anthony's, um, we, found, uh, we found Maria van Velen. Uh, there was interaction between the music and the animation, uh, but I think uh, the music played uh, the biggest part, um, which is very logical, of course. <laughs> but uh, the animation really um, emphasized certain points in the music, uh, just like uh, well, the disorienting parts in the forest, like the, when the Lady of the Birds comes and says this way way from all different uh, it's also done in 3d sound so when you are hearing it you'll hear it literally from uh, a place over there and then over there so um, I think the animation where you see some eyes uh, moving in the forest or looking at the characters you know those uh, pop up in very unexpected places um, and this um, really uh, enhances the idea of, well, she's everywhere. The Lady of the Birds is the master of the forest. Um, she is in control. The creating of the world was uh, quite an intense progress. And we uh, really tried to, to use elements from the story, like uh, taking energy from other people or resources from other people and um, using them for your own good, actually. Um, we really try to reflect this in the landscape. So you see um, in a desert scene, for example, you see all these lines um, between the sand and it's actually, and those are the energy lines that were uh, sucked from the energy, you know, so it's all empty and dead now. And when you look at the forest scene, there are those lines, they are full of life, full of energy, for example. So we really try to to use these elements of the story in uh, the visual design of the landscape. I created the characters to make them look like the singers, uh, because the singers are very uh, diverse in their looks. And well, I received photos of them from Aura and Market, and I sketched a lot to make them look uh, and resemble uh, the actual singers. So it's like a little nice Easter egg. I was very happy with the final result and after when we did the last recording with the, uh, with the singers and we had the final result in our hairs, of course not full yet, but because we had to collect the, the correct uh, recordings and to make it all, all, uh, all one sound, uh, I felt so proud of all of us because we had so many troubles to create it, this opera and it was really hard to create the ensembles and to organize the rehearsals because you know we, have, we are in the middle of the pandemic and it was really, really difficult to organize everyone to a rehearsal and to keep all the measures and yeah, when I had the, the final result in my ears, uh, I felt really proud. I love working with Aga. Um... It's mostly just been a lot of fun. I think at some point we figured out that we both just like things that are kind of different than what we usually do. Um, so personally, we connected on like a personal level and then we also connected on like the levels of what we wanted to make and that kind of thing. Um, so it's just, it's always just been a lot of fun. So when she called me up even, we were pretty much, I'd finished the script for like the theatrical version of, uh, of No Evil and then she called me up when the pandemic had broken out and she called me up and she was like, hey, listen, I have 
an idea. It's a bit weird, but I think you might be really into it. And then I was just all, already on board. I was like, yes, give me all the weird ideas. So that's kind of, I always feel like that's how we work together. It's just very much like a give and take in a really fun way. I think it's always good to imagine the greatest and biggest project you could ever make and then just narrow it down to what is still doable in a certain amount of time. And I think the most crazy and amazing thing was that it stayed very big still. So it it's really is my dream project and, and um, yeah, it stayed true to, to the original idea. I'm so happy that I got to tell this story with so many amazing people working with me and the support of Fontes Ampa. I'm really grateful that my dream of telling this story came true.